None from staff. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Which brings us to proclamations and presentations. Uh, tab two with uh, it's a very chamber of commerce update with uh, Mr. Bailey. Good afternoon. Um, so you should have my report in your packets. I would like to make a correction because I have to turn my report in early uh, for the month of January. Uh, that says December. I hope time. Anyway, there was not four new members, there were six new members. Two new members came in right at the very end of the month. So we had six. That's a good, healthy start to the year. Um, you can see what we had in visits uh, throughout the month and the upcoming events. Um, I would like to let you know that our monthly luncheon that is on the 26th, uh, Alan Hayes, Supervisor of Elections, is going to be the speaker, and he's doing an overview of the 2020 election. So I think that's going to be really well. Our luncheon in January that Mr. Jury spoke at, we had 151 people, which is by far and above our largest crowd up to them was 112. Uh, so 151 people, it was very exciting to see. Uh, thank you all for the, being there for your support. Uh, you see the other things here uh, upcoming, our golf tournament. And again, I'm going to keep this legislative wrap up breakfast on your uh, updates. But I would like to let you know the tickets for that are already selling very heavily. It will sell out. Uh, it's close to, well, there's 80 something tickets sold and we can only have a little over 200. So it's on the Chamber Alliance of Lake County's website. It's $20 a ticket. It's going to be a very, very uh, good event. Any questions? Actually, I do have a question. It doesn't have to do with the material you presented. But I am curious on what um, your visitor numbers were for 2019, if you have that available. Or have an idea, if, even if it's not a precise number. Uh, I know that that number is actually being calculated. Um, it's a number of different sources that we have to compile information. I know that in 2018, it was a little over 1,300 people came through our doors uh, looking for information. I will say that probably we're going to be a little higher than that, probably around 1,500 for 2019. And I can have that for you the next month when I make a report. I'll make it part of my report. Along that line, there's something of interest that you might be interested in. You know we're open Saturdays 10 to 2. Starting with event season, we are going to extend those hours, uh, starting with uh, plain strains of barbecue, and extend those hours for the world a bit longer uh, during event season, because it's almost every Saturday there's big stuff going on, and our office wants to be a little bit longer. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate the information. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berry. <clears throat> Which brings us to tab three, quilts of honor presentation by the fire department. Thank you, Mayor Bogus, and good evening. Council members, for the audio record, this is Richard Keith, Fire Chief. And I'll tell you right, right off the bat, I do not feel um, I do not feel worthy to introduce this agenda item uh, because I am so humbled by this person, Mrs. Judy Bro. Um, she contacted the city. She lives here in the city. She's a resident, and um, she has a mission. Like those of us in public safety and all of us in public service, we. We have missions, multiple missions. This duty has a mission. And her mission is to take a craft skill that she has, making obviously beautiful quilts, and using those to honor military service for our veterans. So she reached out to the city, and uh, between the police department and the fire department, we have uh, eight veterans. So Judy is going to make a presentation tonight of quilts. So. Ms. Judy, would you join me up here? She has with her her husband, uh, Mr. Grove. So, Judy Grove. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, Lisa Monjovi. She's a member of the Lake County Quilt Guild, as am I. She's the youngest member, as she likes to tell everyone. Um, and she is a grandmother. But what makes her special is that she has a husband, a son, uh, and a son-in-law who are currently serving. And she also has a very large quilting machine, which helps to get these quilts done and out very quickly. So she um, gives her time and her expertise as we are. Um, I'd like to tell you about the Quilts of Valor Foundation. Um, I came here as a representative of the Quilts of Valor Foundation 
which organization was established in 2003 when Catherine Roberts had the idea of comforting veterans with quilts during the time her son was deployed in Iraq. Since the foundation's inception, over 240,000 quilts of valor have been awarded, and I am pleased to say I've made about 150 of those. The quilts I award this afternoon were pieced and assembled by hand using an electronic needle, my sewing machine. I have personally made over 100, uh, over 140, probably 150, each one different from every other. I cut and piece the tops and provide the backing fabric and the binding. All quilts are made of 100% cotton, top, back, and batting. Since I have been in Florida, closing in on five years, my quilts of valor have been quilted by either Pam Lease or Marilyn Finnegan, women who have bought those enormous machines, quilting frames, and devote them to quilting for quilts of valor. My friend Lisa Monjovi is, uh, also does that. Lisa is quite special, as I mentioned, because she has members of her family which are currently serving. People who make quilts of valor have their own reason for volunteering time, treasure, and energy, but one attribute links us, a desire to welcome home and thank each service member to whom we present a quilt. We have deep respect and admiration for all veterans, no matter the branch of service, no matter the time, circumstance, and place of that service. And each of us was and is keenly aware of the sacrifice required by that service, both on active duty and post-deployment. Today's recipients are extraordinarily special, for they serve us still in our police and fire departments. You will note at the bottom of the labels of the, of the quilts, um, you won't see it, but the, the recipients will, there is a remembrance to Major Stephen Rush, who was killed in Afghanistan in 2005. Stephen was the son of a close friend and was only two months younger than my oldest son. His mother, Sue Rush, is now the president of the board of directors of Quilts of Valor. Major Stephen Rush was the commander of Operation Red Wings, an attempted rescue mission in the Kundar province of Afghanistan in 2005, depicted in the book and feature film, Lone Survivor. Prior to his career in the military, Stephen was a starring pitcher for Army's baseball team at West Point. He was on track to pitch in the major leagues when the military again came calling. Baseball was his dream, but it always came second to military service. I made my first quilt of valor to honor Stephen in 2005, and all my quilt of valor <coughs> carried the dedication to him. As a single member of the Quilts of Valor Foundation, I am working to make sure that veterans are remembered, thanked, and honored for their sacrifice. I hope that these quilts will serve to remind you and others that your sacrifice has not been forgotten. We hope you will use it and display it as a badge of honor and thanks, but also as our acknowledgement of the personal cost of your years of active duty in the military. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. And I know that there would be a display at this point. Would you like to let it go? Yeah, I would like to uh, have you meet the a fire chief and the police chief at the quilt um, over at the Wall of Appreciation. We're going to take a couple of photographs. While that's going on, we're going to ask the mayor and the vice mayor to then join for a second set of photographs uh, there as well. And then our final one will be the two quilters um, together uh, at the location as well. Okay. I would like to present this quilt to Richard Keith. I personally um, took the pattern because it looks to me like a propeller kicking up dust and he was in the airports. So this is for you and I do this. You can't say no. <laughs> accepted on behalf of the veterans and we asked the veterans uh, what they preferred. They asked that 
the uh, quilts be presented at the public safety complex uh, at a private um, acceptance by their respective chiefs and our quilter. So this uh, uh, this will be presented. Uh, the aid will be presented to the, ch the police chief and the fire chief today here in a public setting uh, and in a more private setting uh, at the public safety complex. They will present it at each um, veteran and that was their choice and we asked them what they preferred. Uh, so right now what we'll do is we'll uh, have the chief uh, join you there and if uh, Mr. Rumble and yes, there we go. We're going to just take a couple of photographs and then the mayor and vice mayor can make their way down there for a second set of photographs. Thank you.
providing for severability, providing for an effective date. <clears throat> and ordinance 2020-02. An ordinance of the City of Tavares, Florida amending the Tavares Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change in future land use designation on approximately 1.50 acres of land located at 12549 Lane Park Cutoff from County Urban Low Density to City Industrial IND, providing for separability and complex, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Novak. Which brings us to the consent agenda. Does anybody want to pull any items for discussion? Yes, I'd like to pull item um, tab five, please. All right, so we'll pull tab five. Uh, any motions based on their meetings? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda of mine and item five, tab five. Also, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five is here. Which will bring us to tab five, resolution number 2020-03, first budget amendment for fiscal year 2020. With Ms. Hope. I think we'll go ahead and have the question asked, and then Ms. Hope can uh, answer the question. The question I have on here, I know this is a formality to go ahead and do this, but I have a, a question regarding um, the amount of $638,816, and that is 1501-51561. Yes, thank you, Ms. Blake. Uh, that is uh, in the future projects um, line item for the Community Development Department, and that present, represents the project carried forward for the comp plan study and also for the rehab uh, renovations for the building department. Now, we will be coming back when we bring the second budget amendment for the next quarter. Any true-ups or adjustments, I anticipate that number to go down a little bit before the next So that number is a cluster of different projects basically in there, correct? That's correct. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions regarding this tab? Do I have a motion? And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Which brings us to the resolutions, which we haven't done today. And brings us to ordinances. And we have two at second reading. We'll move to tab six, ordinance. 2020-01 annexation and rezoning at 1.50 acres located at 12549 Lane Park Cutoff Community Development, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. The subject property is located at 12549 Lane Park Cutoff and is approximately 1.5 acres in size. The land is presently zoned as County Light Industrial District, and the applicant is proposing that the property be annexed and rezoned to City Industrial. The proposed zoning of industrials is compatible with surrounding zoning and uh, the existing industrial land use of the property. There is a building on the property currently. Uh, I don't believe it's occupied, but it is set up to be an industrial use. The annexation of this property has been reviewed by the city's annexation policy and it's determined that uh, the city can properly service uh, this location. The owner has been currently seeking future land use, a future land use amendment to industrial to be compatible with the proposed zoning. At their December 19th meeting, the Planning and Zoning Board voted unanimously to recommend approval of Ordinance 2020-01, and staff recommends that City Council moves to approve Ordinance 2020-01. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. I don't believe we've received any uh, requests to speak to the audience. So does anyone want to speak at this time? Otherwise, I'm going to close public input and move to council. All right, council, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Fitzgerald or for the owner? Anybody want to make a motion? I'll second. Okay, now a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5 to 0. Which brings us to the companion uh, ordinance, tab 7. Order 2020-02, SSFLUM, uh, 1.5 acres located at 12549 Lane Park Cutoff, Community Development once again, which I'm sure we can do the abbreviation for you. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Ordinance 2020-02 proposes a small-scale amendment to the future land use map, changing the property from county urban low density to city industrial to be compatible. Once again, I didn't have any input from the public, so I'll go ahead and close public input. Anybody from council have any questions or have motions? 
I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Five to zero. Which brings us to general government tab eight. To various historical society transition plan agreement with community services. Is that Ms. Hugh, Ms. Roberts? Mm -hmm. Diana 
8 and 714 North St. Clair Abrams Avenue as board member to the Tiberius Historical Society. I just want to thank um, the city and its residents for taking this on. Um, we do want to preserve our history and we think it's a very important part of the city. So thank you so much for taking this on and we appreciate you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Then I'm going to close it to public input and open it up to council. Anyone the council have questions? Yes, Ms. Rogers, I know that you said that uh, we're waiting on the uh, <coughs> conceptual plan. You said we'll have that uh, at the next council meeting, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, just, I mean, there's a lot of uh, information here. and I just, uh, I would really like to see the concept plan before we move forward on this. Uh, it just seems like, uh, you know, maybe we're putting a cart before the horse on this because I know that when this came before the board uh, a while back, we had discussed, uh, you know, putting this in the budget and we can meet with other projects. So right now, we don't know if this is going to be a million dollars, if it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. We really don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm all about preserving history. I think it's uh, great, especially, you know, here in the city, it varies. Uh, but I think, you know, we also need to be fiscally responsible. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I think that, you know, perhaps we could uh, maybe look at tabling this until we get the concept, concept plan in hand, uh, I would like to do that before we uh, move forward on this. Well, I actually served on the um, historical board some years back. I was the treasurer, and I, I really appreciated everything that was put together and, and how it, it's an interesting place. If you haven't been in there, I, I recommend you go. Um, I'm sure Ms. Burley would love to tour it, tour it with you. I've got a couple of, uh, of concerns. Um, have we explored other sites? I know ideally we've been talking about the historical train station. That is a monumental financial responsibility that we're going to commit ourselves to. We have so many other projects in this city that we need to do. And it's also going to be off the beaten path. Um, I would hate to have to wait three, four years for this to come together if we have something maybe in Wooten Park that we could identify as a location. You know, the, the chamber has 13, 1,400 people that go through there on a yearly basis. This way people would be able to enjoy the historical museum. Maybe its membership would grow as well. Um, there's a train exhibit I know that was donated that for kids to have interaction <coughs> with the museum. That would be the perfect location for that. So I, I would like to see us explore other options that maybe the history museum would have a, a home in, in a quicker turnaround, not wait three, four years down the road, and if it gets funded, because quite honestly, as Mr. Singer said, I've got a concern with the dollars that are attached to that, and it's a big commitment for the city. It's a whole new department that you're taking on, um, and we do things right in Tiberias. And thank you for that input, just to give you a little bit of history, if I may. Um, we did uh, take the historical board president for the this, but it's not here at the moment. And Amanda Bogus was our uh, project liaison at the time. Several months ago, we actually toured the uh, train depot in uh, Wood Park as a possible option. Uh, kind of a move-in ready space, albeit smaller than the big fire station. Um, and Brenda did move that idea forward to the board and the committee members, and they were not interested at the time entertaining that idea. I hate to speak for her, but um, that is so that that is where that landed. But we did uh, we did tour the site. It is a nice building, and um, so good point. And thank you for mentioning that. Well, and, and again, I'm just afraid that if the historical society is out of sight, it's going to be out of mind for our residents, our visitors. Um, and again, up the priority is is the financial component. We've got a spot that it could go into though maybe not at the same size, but maybe eventually it can go to something else or, or what have you. I think it's important to preserve our history and, and to be viable in, you know, in the city. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Yeah, I do. I, I just want to clarify some things just for everyone here that may not understand this. So what, what we're seeing here, what you're telling us is that the 
the historical society as we knew it when we did this contract no longer exists. They still have a board and there's still a membership, but they do not want to operate a museum any longer. Okay. So, I have a lot of respect for the historical board, but do they have a dog in the fight now. I mean, if the city, if now, if the city is totally financially responsible for this, do they, are, are they wanting to put money toward, even though they're, they just have their board, do they want to put money toward the renovation of the fire station? I not on that impression that they have the wherewithal to do that. Okay, and I'm going to have to agree with, with Council Member Singer and uh, Council Member Vuegas that, yeah, I'm, I'm real concerned about the money. Um, I love the idea of it being at the fire station. It's a brand new building. It's a beautiful building. It's a replica building of, of an old fire department. Is that correct? Old, old train station, I mean, the old train station. So it's already in a historically, um, you know, replicated building what a perfect place and we save all that money because uh, I'm in no way going to vote to spend a lot of money to go down and renovate that fire station if it's all fallen on the city when downtown would be perfect especially with the chamber being right there I mean people come into the chamber I know you had asked about the visitors but wow I mean you've got your chamber there you've got people coming in and if you have the if we had our museum right there, look at all the money that we've saved. Um, I think it's the logical place for it. I think if we met with whatever board exists still, I think they would have to come to that realization that it's the biggest bang for the buck. I mean, it really is. That's all I have to say. Sarah, I think now, on the concept plan, that was for the old fire station, correct? Yes. There's nothing that's been done to find out what the cost would be to put them in the renovated train. Okay. Well, if, if we could guess, um, it was probably in the $100,000 range um, to the cost of, of putting a museum in any space are the vignettes and the presentation areas and the lighting and such. So you would have to put some money in for that because it is a room white walls. So that's just a very rough estimate. So right now the concept plan that we're waiting on is to do it in the old train station. That's correct. Part of that delivery will be the cost to renovate that building. At that <coughs> we can pay the cost to renovate the current train station. So you will have the two costs. And how much money have we already invested? Uh, you budgeted, uh, you all voted on 12500 um, during your budget session to do a concept plan on renovating the train station. So seven years ago, you... Um, the fire department. The fire department, I'm sorry. So seven years ago, you entered into an agreement uh, for the fire department to become the, the um, history museum. Then this past year, you voted to spend twelve thousand five hundred to hire a professional firm to go through the entire building, brick by brick, every piece, and uh, tell you what it would cost to renovate it for a history museum that would stand the test of time. You know, to be here forever. Um, we're about eighty percent complete. I think we're wrapping it up this week. We'll have the report to you at your next board meeting. And we can also add to that the cost to um, uh, retrofit the train station in Wooten Park. Then you'd have both costs uh, before you. And we'll give you square footages. You know, there's a big difference in square footage. There's a difference in location. Um, we can get you those, both those costs for your next meeting. And just for everyone else's transparency here, uh, when I was the liaison before Mr. Stevenson took over, uh, when we met at the train station, we had, I even suggested that they may be a temporary location until they were able to raise the funds, either through donations or uh, running a gift shop to help raise the money. 
but so that the city would have to provide the full amount to renovate the train station. Uh, but once again, we were voted against uh, about getting to be a temporary position that they wanted to go full tilt towards uh, the fire department. So, um, do we have a motion on this topic? I think I, I heard somebody ask they might consider putting a motion forward about tabling the item until such time as you get the numbers. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I say let's table this item until we get the numbers. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, which brings us to tab nine, economic development strategy 2020 update with Mr. Cooney. Members of the Mayor's Youth, Youth Council. Uh, for the record, Bob Tweedy, your Economic Development Director. The City's Economic Development Team has developed a long-term economic development strategy, and that was originally uh, developed at its inception uh, about 10 years ago. The plan is both geographical and component-specific, spe focusing on 12 economic development components throughout five quadrants in the city. Although the overall vision and objectives remain focused in the same direction, it's prudent to update the plan on a regular basis, expand upon successes and milestones achieved, and seek opportunities for new ones. So each year, the Economic Development Horizon Team meets the Discussion Horizon Team as uh, the Vice Mayor, um, and Ms. Fister, Mr. Dury, and myself, and we recently met, took a look at the plan, and. Uh, reviewed it, made some updates, and I'm just going to go through a little high-level uh, presentation here of, of some growth areas over, over the last year or so that we've, uh, where we've achieved success that we can build upon and, and, and then we can, we can talk about any, uh, any items that need to be addressed or updated. So, there is your, uh, your map, your focus area map, which, which uh, identifies the different quadrants. You can see the cluster there in the downtown area uh, that focuses on the downtown uh, retail, commercial, entertainment district, and then along the uh, 440 <coughs> corridor from the hospital area out to the, uh, the uh, Western Gateway and then down the 19 corridor and, and on over to the uh, 561, 448, or 48 intercheck, interchange where we have the, uh, the Commerce Park. <coughs> so, uh, on the uh, the medical sector front, we've uh, we've seen tre some tremendous growth on the uh, the Waterman uh, Advent Health Waterman campus, as you can see here. Uh, the uh, the construction of the new emergency department, which also houses an expanded women and infants department, it's a new brand new four story building that was just completed in 2019, and uh, the hospital just continues to grow as you're all well aware, and that has stimulated a lot of other expansion over in that area, in that quadrant. As you know, the, the Atwater apartment uh, uh, facility just to the, to the northeast of the hospital, uh, 240 units, just about to double in size. They've completed their, their uh, expansion plan. I think, Mike, they've, they've got all their permits and entitlements, and they're ready to move forward. On, uh, on the expansion of that in the, in the coming months. So uh, that'll be doubled. The, act, the uh, Avalon Park uh, Group project is, is about to uh, get underway. They've already got construction going on the charter school and some, some uh, residential and commercial developments to follow. The Medical Village, uh, otherwise known as Lakeview Center, across from the hospital, uh, we've seen continued growth. We continue to work with our development partners in that area. New practices that have opened in the last year. I think there have been two or three new ones, and you can see a couple that are under construction now, and I think there's a couple in uh, the pre-development phase as well right now. On the right there, you see a, a new uh, a, a new um, kidney dialysis center being built. Uh, there, or I'm sorry, that's on the bottom. On the right, you see a uh, uh, a uh, new podiatry practice that is under. Uh, downtown professional services have expanded quite a bit in the last year. From builders to realtors to travel agents, we have it all in the downtown and it continues to grow. 
the downtown entertainment district, uh, from craft cocktails to charcuterie, uh, from uh, from sushi to pinball. Uh, you can you can do that all in our downtown entertainment district. And right now, I know of only one vacant property that's available for rent. Uh, that that. that uh, that is probably about to be occupied. I just spoke to the property owner a little earlier today, and they've got a lot of interest. That would be the, uh, the, the former Lagodora space over in the, in the, uh, the hotel uh, complex that I think is about to go um, The arts and culture scene has been enhanced with the arrival of the Lake County Museum of Arts, and all those uh, patrons will be able to go across the street soon, hopefully get a nice Italian dinner. Uh, enjoy some of the other amenities in our entertainment industry. Our Commerce Park is full. Um, this, this photo depicts a recent uh, uh, complex development of six 5,000 square feet, uh, square foot uh, industrial buildings that are all but one occupied right now. Uh, I'm seeing that the, the uh, property owners out, and, and Mike and I have talked to at least one property owner out there recently who's getting ready to develop some, some new uh, turn some new dirt over there in the industrial park, so things are bustling out there. Um, new arrival this year, Sunday Cool, not in the Commerce Park, but here just off our downtown, uh, this, this uh, really unique and niche uh, uh, apparel company, which has moved in. Uh, they, they only moved in just in May or June of this, this past year, and uh, they are already, they're employing over 60 full-time people. You can see there they've got a a uh, full-time FedEx truck there, uh, loading loading merchandise every day, and uh, they're already under an expansion. They know sooner got under underway with their operation there than uh, they have to double in size, which uh, which is taking place now. Uh, Seaplane Base Jones Brothers, our base commercial operator. Uh, when I got here in 2015, they were operating one single-engine airplane out of. Uh, out of a closet, really, was their business operations center over in the corner of the uh, the the, uh, the prop shop building. And in the last year, they've quadrupled in size in their physical space, moving into the old trailhead building and, and refurbishing that. And they've gone now to a fleet of five aircraft. Their charter business, their scenic flight business, and particularly their flight training business is is growing wildly. And on the right there, you can see that uh, the first phases of reconstruction of our seaplane base are underway with the, with the recent removal of pilings. And uh, soon we will be, uh, we anticipate getting the uh, green light from the insurance company to move forward with the construction plans. Special events are thriving from, uh, from uh, barbecues and contests to uh, air shows and seaplane fly-ins. Uh, we're drawing a lot of people with over 20 events in our downtown, and they're all, they're all moving. Uh, what we used to call fast food, we now call quick service and casual dining, which you can enjoy out uh, on our 19 quarter, and that would be uh, all thanks to the development of the various crossroads, Publix Plaza, which is uh, rapidly filling up, and, and the adjacent out parcels. Um, and uh, once you're done with all that fast food, you can soon, hopefully, head down uh, and get on the soon-to-come bike trail and, uh, and, and head on over to Mount Dora and back and, and burn off some of those calories and, and cap off your evening with a beautiful sunset cruise on our new beautiful new Mount Dora Queen, which is located down at the marina. Um, and, and I just would add that we have included in uh, this, this sector of, or this, this component of the plan the, uh, the trail project as a, as a major major item. Um, you know, there's a lot of momentum moving forward. We've had a lot of talk about it. I think Mr. Dillon is up in, uh, up in Tallahassee right now beating the drum with the state for, for uh, funding on that. Mr. Drury, and Mr. O'Keefe, the whole team has been pulling together and working hard uh, to get this project moving forward and uh, I think it's going to achieve some great results for economic development in our community. Uh, so I'll just close with this excerpt which is from actually intro of your economic development plan. And I'm not going to read it, but I think that what, what you see in bold there is really just an important reminder and important for us to focus on uh, that it's really our policies that, that allow us to keep moving forward. You know, it's not the role, responsibility, uh, or 
a function of government to create, maintain, and expand businesses. It's our role to create the fertile ground and the atmosphere and the environment where the private sector can do what they do best. It's all private sector development, all private sector uh, uh, investment, which has created all of this and continues uh, uh, the growth. Uh, our function is to do what you all keep doing very well every year and, and every month and every day uh, between between the council up there at the dais and uh, my colleagues here on the leadership team, creating uh, the infrastructure, the policies, the um, services that are uh, what attract and allow businesses to grow. So I'll close with that, and I will just be happy to answer any questions or comments or input that, that you all may have. Any questions for Mr. Tweedy or comments? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just, uh, you know, it just always amazes me. We always talk about how the city of Tamaris is really growing. Uh, but when you put it all on paper like this, if you look at everything that's happening in the city of Tamaris, uh, I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. And, uh, you know, all these businesses coming into our community, it helps uh, lower the tax rate for our citizens. So uh, just keep it up and uh, keep those businesses coming in. Thank Luke, you. And that's the condensed versions. Right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tweedy, before you leave, sir, just a couple real quick things. Uh, Dora Queen. So I want to go on that. Is that okay. open? If it's not open, when will it be open? I want to check not, it out. That was really cool. Yeah, the last update I had from, I'm glad you brought that out from the, the owners. Um, they're looking at probably about mid March. They're still doing some final uh, you know, construction items on the vessel itself. Really, the big thing they're waiting on is all their Coast Guard approvals. Uh, which, you know, they're, they're at the mercy of, uh, of Washington on that. And uh, they expect that any time now. And, and once they get that and finish up the, uh, the improvements they have to, interior-wise, they, they'll be up and running hopefully next month. I'm really excited about that one. And the docks, the pilings are gone, but there's no green light on bringing, I mean, pilings are going to go right back in. I, I would imagine that would be the first step. So pilings are gone. What's happening now is our, uh, our, uh, our team, our, our design build team, continues to move forward with the permitting. That's a big element of this, um, and, and they've been, you know, moving along well. With they, in fact, my most recent discussion with them, you know, things are moving quicker than they expected with that. So that's that can be a real constraint, and that's really good that they're, they're they don't anticipate any issues with any of the agencies. We um, await insurance's final, final, and they have seven different underwriters, seven different reinsurers, Lloyds of London, AIG, uh, that have to go through all of this stuff. And, and we brought you the, the whole package just before the, the end of the year. Uh, they're going through all that, the whole uh, ART maximum price package and design, just to make sure they're all good with it. And we expect to hear you literally any day from uh, once they do, we're, we're ready to go with a notice to proceed with a contract. It will take some time. Uh, it'll take about five months or so for all the fabricating, for all the dock pieces and the pilings and all those things to be completed. Meanwhile, they, you know, the, they can't do anything until the permitting process is done anyway. So that's moving forward. Um, in, in a perfect world, uh, that'll take five to six months, uh, and then they'll be able to start actually beginning of June or so, start sinking pilings and, and dock pieces in, and that will be about a six-month build. So. I think that would make people so happy when they see that starting to go back again. You know, I think exciting. it would certainly make me happy. It's, exciting. <laughs> it's really exciting, Mr. Tweedy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tweedy. Uh, we'll move on to Tower 10, Prescription Burn and Surveys Nature Park with uh, Chief Thank you again, Mayor. <clears throat> Council. For the audio record, this is Richard Keith, the fire chief. And Miss Judy, you would achieve something tonight. They have never seen me speechless. So they might want you to come back from time to time <laughs> when I get long winded. So, agenda uh, number 10 tonight is, uh, is titled Prescription Burn of the Tavares Nature Park. So, the key word there is prescription. That is doing this on purpose. Um, so, this would be a, a team presentation with. Uh, with me and James Dillon, our Director of Public Works Department, but as Bob mentioned, he's up in Tallahassee, he's chasing funding and support for other uh, projects going on. So we wish him well, um, and we want 
to, to have him have success up there. Um, so he has entrusted this presentation to me. So Bob just went through a lot of the great things we're seeing from the ground up. So with um, you own land, there's still uh, responsibilities that go along with maintaining that land. And the prescription burn is one of the one of the big ones. So and we're talking about the Green Bay Department. Hopefully everybody knows where that's at. You had some you had some um, exhibits in your agenda packet, including a map of the various nature parks. We're talking about around 100 acres, right? So here is the official description of this project. The Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, comma, Florida Fire Service, has established a program of wildland vegetative fuel treatment to be effective in and around communities and subdivisions in order to mitigate the risk of homes and property being damaged or destroyed by wildfire. So it's very stationary park. You've seen it. Uh, you know what it looks like. It was, uh, we did have a prescription burn out there a few years ago, and it's time to do it again. Now, it just so happens that we have fallen into a great opportunity here to do that um, in partnership with the Florida Fire uh, Fire Service. So um, just to tell you this, firefighters have three heroes. So police officers for the obvious reason. The high voltage people, so when you've got power lines down in your parking, you're real glad to see CCO and do show up. But our third is Florida Fire Service. But when, uh, when there's a wildland fire, these are the people that we call. We're real glad to see them. They have a phenomenal skill and experience, and they have some big equipment that they can bring, including things that fly. So they have a lot of resources, and they know how to do this. So we have invited them to be here tonight. So from the Florida Fire Service, Forestry Service, I'm sorry, I have a Supervisor Mr. Roy Cliff and his Ops Chief Mike Penn. And so and then please know that we're also doing this in concert with their PIO and Mark O'Keefe, our communications director, has been in communication with their PIO. So everything we're talking about, this is truly a team effort. So I want to ask, um, ask our, our, our friends from Forestry Service here to just come up, tell you what they have planned. You've got their mitigation plan in your agenda packet. And then once they finish, we, we can uh, totally talk about this, vet this out in your evening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Good afternoon, Council. I'm uh, Board Rep, Board Forest Service. I'm Forest Area Supervisor here in Lake County. Because my operations manager. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions you may have about this. Basically, what we're doing is working with the uh, director, fire chief here, something like that, over on uh, Health Works. We're going to do a mitigation work. That's what we call it. They have uh, put a lot of effort, there's a lot of science behind this. And it's to be a joint effort, so there's a lot of hazard and a risk for the right? Also, by us doing it this way, the costs are to be basically part of the end. This follows underneath what we call our mitigation grant, the law fire mitigation. So we absorb most of the costs for all of our stuff through federal grants. Uh, I don't know if I've gotten any inputs for the public. I did. I already know who it is, so if you know, you'd like to come up and speak for your three minutes. Absolutely. 
the dogs that live there probably don't want to have to compete for uh, the turf. Um, and so maybe they could explain a little bit about how they're going to deal with all that wildlife that's in there. There also are some people claim to be living in there that are homeless. Uh, there are also people that we see on the street going down there and probably are suspected of dealing drugs uh, down by that restroom that was put in, and that's never been dealt with, apparently. I know there's neighbors further down the street that they see that a lot, so uh, you've got some issues. Also, there's a fence on the other side of the park over by uh, the uh, Far Reach Ranch that uh, is failed. You can drive right through it. I've done it. Uh, when I was uh, looking into the great uh, camping uh, plan uh, in the past. And uh, so just uh, maybe somebody needs to go around that and come up with a plan to, to one, to make sure that you don't have some people going in there. Uh, and finally, uh, how close can I get if I want to roast marshmallows? They're not listening. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yeager. Uh, if you'd like to answer those questions before we move to council. Yes, I won't talk about the bears. I'll let our forestry uh, partners talk about that. But just a little bit more information about prescribed fur. So really the, the whole purpose of the prescribed fur is to thin out that underbrush and to uh, get rid of the uh, non-indigenous indigenous species of plants. So uh, a lot of what Nance was talking about will be taken care of with this. And we've discussed all these issues ad nauseum. We have really... Uh, uh, debated this in-house completely. Uh, we have all the same concerns. We are concerned about wildlife. So uh, between uh, our, our partners in forestry, they have a mitigation plan. We have a mitigation plan. We're talking about putting out signage. Um, we're also concerned about roadways, uh, you know, and uh, closing roads if we have to. The one thing we can't really give you is a specific date because, as Mr. Griffin mentioned, this is a very scientific process. And the weather has to be just right. The mid levels have to be just right. So they could just come in and say, you know, we're going to, you might say, 12 hours before. Okay, weather's looking good. Radar says it's good. We're burning tomorrow morning, starting at 6 a.m. So we're then using Mr. O'Keefe, we're ready to get those, those messages out. So Mr. Kramer, you want to start the line? Uh, yes, Gene and Science. It's, it's very weather dependent. What more more situation we're driven by. But, um, what we plan on doing with this, because of the smoke impact itself, we don't want to shut down the roads. I've got to wait until this comes up this way, so we've got pretty much more things for us. I've got to wait until the smoke out of the lake or over areas not really popular, so to speak. Uh, 100 acres, we are in cooperation, this is also cooperation firm with the Far Reach Branch. We've had their approval to include part of their property onto this, so we're doing minimal damage to the actual property of the preserve that's happening. Because normally what we do is we go in and we put fire lines and break everything up so we can control this stuff we want to worry about getting down. In order for us to do that, we cooperate with Far Reach Ranch, so I don't have to put a line going down the center of their property and preserve to separate boundaries and disrupt all the uh, native species. So they all agreed so we could do this and put apart everything in the way. Now, cooperation for the animals and stuff, it's been our opinion and stuff that we've done over numerous years and things like that. Basically, the animals go deeper into the woods. Within a few days, the fresh farm provides the nutrient station and it sprays them out and they start feeding on the fresh farm. I've seen them eat mash, they produce pet elements and stuff they need for survival. And it also brings out fresh growth of the growth of trees will start sprouting, new grass growth with the nutrients and green fresh care about. Uh, as far as the the uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, all the speaker I might be out there, that's uh, by clearing off the underbrush, they'll have the place so high. Okay. The little deals that uh, they may do, it's, we don't have enforcing that. But again, they won't have a place to hide. It's pretty good. We'll be able to do it. Thank you. Anybody on the council have any questions? I just want to add, uh, on the public outreach, we're working very closely with Lake County. We're working with the Forestry Division. 
We will have six message boards out at strategic locations, out in the area, in the roads, at the strategic locations in the intersections. We will have a call-in number, is that correct, Mark? Yes, we'll have a call-in number. Uh, the folks can call the city to various, uh, and it will uh, tell them all the uh, things that are going out, updated on a regular basis. We are going door-to-door -door with uh, to any of home within, for the, how many feet, 500, 400? A 500 feet vance you'll be knocked on just so you're prepared keep your house tidy uh, they'll be uh, knocking on his door and others uh, and then leaving notices and information as well uh, we'll be doing using social media we'll be using our website we will have a link at our website uh, for additional information so we're taking this very seriously we're planning ahead uh, we're putting everything in place with Lake County, the, the state, and the city, uh, and uh, we're going to make sure that all the residents are aware, uh, they can call uh, if they have any issues, um, uh, they'll know what to do. Um, so I think it's been, been a very well-coordinated effort, uh, and I suspect this will occur in the end of February, beginning of March, okay. somewhere in that area. Uh, when the weather's right, so I just wanted to add that. Also, it's, it, I know a lot of people have concerns over this, but think of it this way, if you actually get a big wildfire in there, which we're not full, you go, you go there and stop it, but depending on the weather comes in, you'll have major impact, major shutdowns, things like that, for up to several weeks. I think what you're saying is, if we don't get rid of the fuel Correct. that has accumulated over the last 10 years, it will be an uncontrolled burn. By us going in there and getting rid of the 10-year-old fuel, uh, it will be a controlled burn. And in a controlled burn, we can set up hotline, phone numbers, control it, and all of that. An uncontrolled burn, obviously, is not good. And the whole purpose of doing this is that we don't have, being the lightning capital of the world, we don't have an uncontrolled burn. Council, would you like to address this topic? I just have a question. The fact that it has to be a floating date because of weather, because we are in event season, if there's a perfect date, but we have any of the events going on, planes, trains, or a boat show, or what have you, then that's going to take up, the fire will take a back seat to that event? No, I don't think we were going to hold off on doing that for an event. Um, you know, the winds are a big thing. Uh, an event in downtown, uh, may not even be affected depending on where the winds. I mean, if the winds are coming from the north uh, and heading south, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even affect the event. No. But we did not plan on holding this up uh, for a one day event. This will last one week, I think it was, was it? Yeah, no, plus, plus, if we actually start partying, we will be able to do a few hours. All right, so a few hours. Um, the other thing is, is you know, we have a grant opportunity here, and it's, it's quite costly to do this. This is not going to cost the city anything. So our thinking is, while the grant is in hand, while they're geared up to do it, they're leaving one burn out uh, south of here, right? Uh, you're finishing that one up? We were to doing that. Okay. All right. So that one's being finished. We're next on the list. Uh, and then they move on. Uh, if we were to hold them off, uh, we probably would lose the grant. They probably wouldn't come back here for a year. We'd be in the same situation again. It's a good question, but we are not putting a, we are not going to stop it for an event. Thank you. This is our youth council departing. Thank you for being here. Uh, many of them have after school, uh, tennis, music, uh, you yes. name it. Uh, so they come here for one hour to learn about local government. Uh, and then they're off to their evening activities. I'll make a motion to approve option one, approve the, the prescription burn of the Tadarius Nature Park area. I'll second. All right, I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? I just want to say I like the price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make our parks healthier. Absolutely. It's definitely needed, so thank, thank you very much. All right, so we have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Which brings us to tab 11. Bid award for Lake Francis Estates Water and Sewer Replacement Projects. Uh, Mr. Clark. 
Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, staff, members of the public, and residents. Uh, I come before you today to ask your approval, our consideration for approval for the bid award for Lake Francis Estate Water and Sewer Replacement Project. The objective is to award the low bid for the City of Tiberias Lake Francis Water and Sewer Project and execute a contract with the current low bidder, who is TW Joint Venture in the amount of $6,718,402.15 after the FDEP state approval for an SRF loan. This project is to replace all the water and sewer piping. Most of you know about this. This is the seventh time I've been weaved into council on, on different things from the beginning. So uh, it's not new to some of you, and even the newer council that I've, uh, I've talked to and tried to bring up to speed. You'll see in the documents you have the prior six times it's been to council. You will also see a table on the loans that were approved from planning to, uh, to water design to water piping to the second phase lift station. And uh, so you will see the total loans approved, uh, preliminarily approved by the FDP for $7.5 million. And you will lastly see the table uh, of the bids, which uh, the apparent low bid was due to the, uh, the uh, <coughs> GCW joint venture at $6,718,402.15. Uh, your options are to award this bid or not, and staff recommends that you do. Uh, this will impact, it has been factored into the five year rate study for the city of the and it has uh, met legal sufficiency. So I I think the only thing I would like to add is uh, we got seven bids, they're all a million apart. Uh, so we went out, um, got those seven bids, and uh, one of them, the low bidder, quite frankly, was here a lot, asked me questions with a very sharp pencil. Uh, and I think the reason this bid came in where it came in is, is they, knew, they knew the project very, very well. Sometimes bidders um, sharpen their pencils and really go after it and fine tune it. Uh, and sometimes bidders are very busy and they do an overview and they give you a bid. So seven bids, a million apart, usually you'll find that the lower bidder has sharpened their pencil. Sometimes, you know, they underbid and we're very concerned about that. Uh, but in this case, I can tell you uh, they did their homework. Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the lowest pair of their PCW made six to eight inquiries to my staff and at least three visits here where they spent a lot of time looking over the project, asking questions. They were absolutely the most involved here. Thank you, Mr. Clark. And I didn't receive any public input, uh, so I will close public input and move to council. Make a motion to approve. Sorry. Um, we have a motion to second. Any discussion from council? I do have uh, just a little bit of discussion. Um, Mr. Clark, I know that the residents are going to be very excited to have this project moving forward. I know I've spoken with them many times, and uh, I know you've been out there a lot. I know that they're uh, they're excited to have this underway. Um, one question that I get from the residents, and they always ask, when you're doing this project, are you going to be able to address anything with the stormwater? No. Right. But I will say the roads are all being redone, resurfaced and all. And if the roads are done right with the proper crown, all the curbs are being replaced one would assume it will help the stormwater level. Okay. I just want to get clarification on that. Thank you. Well, my question is, has this company done work for the city before? No. And will there be a resident engineer on the property? Uh, yes, there will, and a resident city inspector full time. Thank you. I just have one question for this open. So this came in under what the state revolving loan was approved for. So are we able to use that remaining money in case we do have any overages or unforeseen problems? Or is it just topped out of what the bid is? I will just say to the director for tonight, this will go up to the state, state will approve this bid, and they may or may not adjust the money that they already approved. So I'm just saying that the money that's been approved for the state revolving loan is going to be used for the
Well, thank you, Ms. Hogan. And we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you, Kim. This brings us to tab 12. Establish the fiscal year 2021 broad budget priorities. City, no Mr. Chair. It's been the past practice of the council to set broad budget priorities for the city administrator to use as guiding principles in developing a budget that is commensurate with the city council's overall budget goals. If we're all rowing in the same direction, the city moves forward, the budget moves forward. Um, so today, I'm going to be asking for your broad budget goals, after which I will work with the leadership here to create a budget and bring back that budget to you in June. By way of background, we run about seven different areas, six governmental operations. The first one is general government. The general government, which includes things like police, fire, libraries, and things of that nature, those revenues are derived from property taxes and other fees. Our other uh, company, if you will, that we operate is utilities. Utilities includes water, wastewater, sewer, reclaimed water, and stormwater. Their uh, revenues are not derived from property taxes, but they're derived from user fees. We sell water, we sell sewer, we sell stormwater. Solid waste is our third one, separate company. Uh, that's garbage collection. There, the revenues are derived not from property taxes, but from fees for the service that we provide in garbage collection. The fourth one is Seaplane Marina and Enterprise. We derive <coughs> revenues from our fuel sales at our airport, our prop uh, shop or terminal building fuel sales, rental from the Seaplane operator. Uh, we have a CRA TIF fund in the downtown. We use some funding for that. Uh, and we do use some property um, uh, taxes for that one. We have our pavilion on the lake, which is uh, very close to being self-sufficient. Most of the revenues there, over 90% are derived from um, the rental income we get from the pavilion. We have our capital projects, we have a five-year capital program, we'll be updating that after we hear uh, you tonight, uh, and then we'll update that five-year capital program and bring that um, back to you. Of course, that's a mixture of grants, impact fees, um, property taxes, and things of that nature. Uh, and then we have our debt service program. And uh, every year we provide you uh, what we did for debt service. We'll update that. Uh, and this year we'll be giving you a debt service management uh, program, which will talk and speak to debt service capacity uh, for now and into the future. I've included three exhibits. One speaks to the historical information on our city budget. The other one is um, about the future of our budget and then current things that are underway, current projects, etc. I'm just going to highlight a few things there. So today, I'll just read the last part about the history of the budget over the last 10, 12 years. When benchmarked, our budget, when benchmarked, against other communities of similar size in Florida, it reveals that the various comes out on top in terms of efficiencies, including number of employees per capita for various services, such as police, fire protection, which make up a significant part of any city's general budget. The positive economic conditions that the various is beginning to enjoy today did not materialize without hard work by this city council and others, all the employees, and a civic entrepreneurial approach to governing, taking calculated risks, being creative, and overcoming fiscal challenges. Um, I hope you take a look at it. It really tells a story of where we were when the streets were empty, when people left town, the packing house closed, this was a government town only, the hospital wasn't here, and people were coming up and saying, there's no jobs. Uh, what can you do? And they all got together in this room for two years, developed a plan with the council to take some calculated risks, do some creative projects, and turn the city around. 
uh, and I'm proud to have been a part of that. Wasn't here at the beginning of it, um, and, but inherited some of the things that some of the people were doing with previous city councils. Um, so take a look at the history of that. I'm sure you already have. As far as the future goes, uh, we've been pretty savvy, fiscally savvy on the revenues. We have a CPI for our utilities so that we're never going to find ourselves in a situation where we're underfunded. We have a CPI for uh, garbage, consumer price index increases, so that uh, we don't underfund uh, making our city clean and picking up the garbage. Um, the seaplane base uh, 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 and marina is being rebuilt. You know, 98% of the funds are coming from seven reinsurers. We'll hear, as Tweedy said earlier, uh, an answer pretty soon that they're going to go ahead and fund it, and we've budgeted for our match on that, our 2%. Uh, the pavilion in the lake, just about self-sufficient. It's an economic engine, it's an economic driver. It fills all our hotels, all of our restaurants. I constantly hear the hotel owner saying, if it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, so we're, it's doing what it's supposed to do, creating a lot of jobs, you know, photography, wedding planners, uh, catering companies, seaplane rides, just flower shop moved to town because of it. I mean, it's just a, quite an um, economic driver there. And we continuously look forward next year, you know, to being self-sufficient. I mean, we're very close. Uh, the capital improvement program I talked about, five years. Uh, the debt service I talked about, you'll be getting your debt service uh, report. We'll have capacity uh, numbers in there for you as well. When it comes to the future of the budget, I can tell you that um, revenues are going to go up. We're going to get more income into the city. We Property values are going up. There's been some growth. You, you've approved a few uh, commercial businesses. You just did one tonight. Uh, plumbing supply companies moving into town. That's going to increase revenues for your, down, for your community. Uh, you've also <coughs> approved uh, some subdivision. They're building houses. That's going to increase revenues. And I can tell you expenses are going up. The cost of doing business in the United States of America and into various is going up. Electricity is going up. Fuel prices is going up. Uh, oil is going up. Price of steel is going up. Health care is going up. Everything is going up. As and will continue every year. Uh, so both revenues and expenses will go up and that will be reflected in your next year's budget. The last uh, exhibit I gave you was the top 25 projects. Uh, I've listed the top 25 projects that are underway. These are projects you previously approved, previously budgeted for, they're either designed, engineered, waiting for an insurance uh, company to give their blessing, uh, waiting for an engineer to put a stamp, waiting for a permit to be done. But you've got 25 projects that are underway in this city uh, that are um, many multi-year projects, um, and so we're very busy. We got a lot going on, and there's a lot more going on over the next year and year and a half. Also listed the top 25 initiatives, um, everything from benchmarking, police department accreditation, um, to our ISO rating. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives uh, that we're doing at the library, uh, in our recreation program. Uh, in every department, um, and a lot of these are new initiatives uh, that are underway today and going into the next year. So take a look at all the projects that we're working on that you're going to see come out of the ground over the next year, two, or three. All the new initiatives that we're doing without hiring new people. Um, you know, my staff is looking at me sometimes saying, new initiative, new initiative, are you going to add more people? Uh, and, you know, we have to balance that. Um, I'll lay this all out for you because you're about ready to tell me what you're looking for for next year. And you need to do that in a backdrop of knowing what we're already doing and that we'll be coming out of the ground next year in addition to whatever you add. That's all I have for you right now. I'll give it back to uh, the mayor to go ahead and discuss your next year's broad budget priorities, which I will listen to, take in, and sprinkle amongst the budget that comes back to you um, in the uh, upcoming budget cycle. Back to you, Mayor. All right, well, I will kick us off with uh, my short list of my priorities, which I'm channeling my inner Kirby Smith. I'd like to increase the reserves. 
uh, have the same level of service, lower the millage rate if we can, uh, finish the public works project, getting it organized, and find funding for that, which I know Mr. Dillon is working on right now. Uh, continue road paving and see if we can increase that if possible um, so that we can get ahead of the road pavings that have always been behind. Uh, clearly finish the marina, which everybody's excited about. Had a billion earned money uh, this year, instead of us being close to it, and when there is exceeded. And then uh, the Wooden Park Playground, getting that worked out so that we can have a safe place for the kids to play. Any other council members want to jump in? I'd like us to see, to give the West End of Main Street some attention. We continue, we continue to put that on the back burner, and that is a gateway into our downtown. We need to spend some time and some energy um, in that. Uh, all of the things you listed, I certainly agree with. Reserves being a very important one as well, but West End of Main Street would definitely be a, a big one for me. Mr. Singer? Did you look at my list? No. <laughs> a lot of the things on there were um, what I have as well. Um, you know, I'd like to keep the millage low. Uh, this past year, City of Tiberias was uh, fortunate. We had one of the largest decreases in the uh, county. Uh, I know we are anticipating growth. I know expenses do go up, uh, but I feel that we can continue to deliver our high level of services and uh, still be able to lower the village uh, with the businesses that we have coming into our community. Uh, last year, we were able to increase our road uh, resurfacing program by 30%. Uh, I'd like to see that increase. I'd like to see us, um, you know, if at least 30%, if not a 50% increase. Keep our reserves healthy. Um, I'd like to continue uh, to see us protecting the environment. I know that we're uh, continuing to pursue grants uh, up in Tallahassee for um, stormwater improvement projects. I want to make sure that we keep our small town feel. We have our events, our 4th of July celebration, and our Christmas uh, lights that all promote uh, that community feel. I want to see, uh, make sure that we continue with that. Um, but I'd also like to see if we, uh, you know, all the events that we do put on, I'd like to see if we can tweak those, uh, you know, just do an inventory of all the uh, events that we do have, see if there's uh, some places that we can maybe cut see if we can maybe find some uh, sponsors for those events that could uh, reduce the uh, cost for our taxpayers. Want to make sure we take care of our hardworking staff. We've got some of the best employees around. We're very fortunate for them. Uh, and I know, according to, as Mr. Drury said, our benchmarking, we do a lot with uh, a, a, a lot fewer people than uh, most cities do. So I just want to make sure that our uh, employees and our staff are taken care of. Keep improving the overall appearance of our city. I uh, want to make sure that we have uh, you know, all of our areas clean. Uh, support partnerships. As uh, Ms. Boggess has pointed out, we do have our public works currently uh, working with Lake Tech on a very important initiative. I want to see us continue to support that project as well as uh, any other partnerships because by working together, we can accomplish so much more. We have the Tabador Trail. Let's see us to continue to support that. Uh, complete a majority of the projects that we already have on our books. Uh, it's already been pointed out that we have our seaplane base that is currently uh, in the uh, final stages, hopefully. So hopefully we can get that done pretty soon here. Uh, I'd also like to uh, you know, continue. I think every year we look at this, and it competes with the other projects on the budget. But I would like us to continue looking at you know, the possibility of videotaping our council meetings. And uh, last but not least, I uh, want to continue the economic diversity that uh, our economic development team has uh, done such a wonderful job and continue to uh, bring businesses into our community. Because as we know, when we bring businesses in, that helps reduce the tax rate on our, uh, the rest of our residents and our business as well. So that's all I have, Mayor. Mr. Stevenson? Um, two different Um, number, the first thing on my list, and obviously uh, I don't disagree with anything that's been said previously. We kind of tend to repeat ourselves when you get this late into it. Uh, so first and foremost, I agree with everything that's already been said. That those are great ideas. Uh, water. I, I think we should really protect our water. Um, you know, Mr. Drew, you told me that, uh, the difference in the water when we put in the eco park. 
uh, and, and the visibility and stuff, but I think we should always make sure that we stay really concerned about the quality of the water, and particularly Lake Dora, but truly in, in all the waters of those areas. Uh, streets are a big concern. I was on reading uh, in the initiatives about this pavement uh, preservation, and it, it made me excited that we can spend you know one dollar instead of six dollars to save the road. That, that those types of numbers because we've never had a budget. Uh, uh, you know, you have a budget where you're falling down, you have a budget where you're staying even, you have a budget where you're progressing. I'd like to see our budget get to a point where it's progressing, uh, and I think a very in way, in innovative way to do that could, could be to preserve a road instead of having to reconstruct a road. That made me very excited to have one-sixth of the cost. Um, yeah, it, looking forward, uh, the gateways, you know, we've all talked about these certain gateways that come in and out of Tiberias, and I'd like that to be very attractive to folks who have an entertainment district downtown, uh, so you have to bring them in. So, so I think, you know, let's put some honey and some sugar on those, make them beautiful, make them clean and nice. Uh, I think I've talked before about some, you know, gimmicky thing like navigational lights or something on those uh, entranceways to, to our, our downtown area. But I think uh, folks would also appreciate it um, if you live on those gateways. You get a lot of traffic. I, I always loosely call it, you know, living on a racetrack because of the traffic that comes through. So I think they would really appreciate the folks that, that do have to deal with that traffic. would really deal if we could just make our, our gateways, our entrances, uh, very attractive to folks. Uh, communication, I think Mr. O'Keefe is awesome with all that computer stuff and all that stuff that I don't understand that well. Uh, and I know we have a website, I go to it uh, from time to time, I read the agendas and stuff when they come out. Uh, and I also just go in there just to goof off, but uh, I think communication is a big deal. I think it's really, really important that everybody knows exactly what's going on. Like, you know, we have sunshine balls, we don't do things in secret. And, uh, I wish everyone participated in one. Uh, I, I mentioned last year uh, to Mr. Jury that catalog between the jail and the um, courthouse. If somehow we could like get an electronic sign or something up there to advertise our events and advertise, you know, like public service announcements and just the cool stuff, you know, uh, maybe we could have a sign up there and electronically, you know, like Mr. O'Keefe, but you know, like the pylons are coming out. So then everybody that drives by there, they know that the pylons are coming out. The new pilings are going in, you know, if you're in five months. Stuff like that to, to get the word out to people and kind of force it to them. But we need that also on 441. I don't know how we can pull that off. I don't know the billboard. I, I don't know how we can pull that off. But communication through innovative things like getting, you know, if we could rent the catalog from the county or something. Uh, and then that um, commerce park. Uh, I'd love to see more progress in the, the commerce park. I'd like to see cool businesses like the t-shirt business came in. Uh, I know Mr. Tweedy uh, had talked about, what is it, uh, request for proposals for like a craft beer or like a craft uh, uh, hooch, like liquor place or something like that. Something really uh, uh, fresh and unique. Uh, I think that's fun. I want to keep going and going. I agree with everybody, so that gives me about 30 followers. Ms. Pister? Yes, I, I have my list here. Um, yeah, I agree with what everyone has said, of course. Um, you know, move forward with the trail, I think that's important for sure. Um, our comp plan, our comprehensive plan that we need to finish up our 20, 20 year plan. So it covers the next 20 years, we need to do that. Um, our special events, you know, I want to continue to support. We've got like 20 something events, but I'd like to see some events that focus more like on the summer months and some of our down months that we still seem kind of empty. And I know it's hard because there are people here, but. Um, I just think we need to continually try to bring people into our city. And then the marina, let's get this done, stay on top of that, move it as fast as we can play on it. And I want it to operate 365 days a year. It gives people a reason to come to our city. Um, it, and, you know, it's holiday time because we can talk about a Christmas village, we can talk about this and that. A Christmas village lasts for three weeks and you spend all that money for the same money we could get out there and build this beautiful fire and water fountain that no one here has 
what an attraction, what a, you know, what a, a reason to come to Tiberi's. You know, if you don't, if you're not interested in seaplanes and you're not interested in other things, I don't know anyone who wouldn't be interested in seeing this beautiful seaplane. We are America's seaplane city. I think we need to erect a beautiful fountain, and I guarantee you it will be a draw and it will be part of a, our economic development plan. I think that people would come, people would travel here to see this. And I'm not talking about something silly, I'm talking about something very nice. Um, and at Christmas time, it could be, and it plays music, and at Christmas time, it would do Christmas music, and the lights could be Christmas lights. St. Patrick's Day could be green lights. Valentine's Day could be red lights. I mean, Easter could be pastel lights. I mean, there's a way to build these things where it is something to come see every single day of the year, 365 days a year. So I want y'all all, I'm talking to the audience, but I really should be talking to y'all, I want y'all to consider this and think about the draw that this would be in our in our downtown. <clears throat> Another thing that I'm thinking about is a, I'm not trying to compete against the private sector, but we have, because the private sector won't jump on this one because it's too small, but it would do a lot for us. When we have all these people come to our events, and we have a lot of people come from out of town, and they come in RVs, I'm thinking about we've got some property that's not being used, that's within walking distance of downtown, I would like y'all to think about a pocket RV park. It would be something we could do ourselves. This isn't going to cost a lot of money. I mean, we could do it in-house, a lot of this. Everybody thinks about money. But and it would be short-term, whether it would be 10 days or whatever it would be. It would be short-term. They'd come in, they'd have a place to park. Um, and I'm not trying to compete against the private sector because nobody's got property downtown that they want to put an RV park, but we just happen to have some kind of out of sight. It's not property that would would be an eyesore to look at. It's kind of tucked away. I want y'all to think about that. A pocket RV park. Be small. How many do we think I could fit there? 50. I could fit 50 RVs. And that's people. People constantly ask me about do you not have anywhere? They'd like to be within walking distance. A lot of them travel with little golf carts. We're a golf cart community. They could travel downtown. Just ways to keep them here. Because when you send them elsewhere, sometimes they don't come back here. But if you've got them here, you can hold them captive, you know, with <laughs> fire and water and fountains and music and, and just, you know, all kind of new things. All the food and all the entertainment that we have here in the events. Okay, so I'm going to end that with economic development. The next thing I want to talk about is I know we've got our retirement plan, our employee retirement plan. And I know we've been trying to transition, you know, because we've had that local private pension plan. And I think we've moved about everyone, but you haven't moved. This. I think we've got a few employees left. You've got, um, I don't know which employees you have left. I think, how many do you think we have left? That and the city council, you know, getting everybody on the FRS plan. I'd like to see that work through. I think that's the end. Don't we have just about everybody in it? We don't have everybody. We've got the police department just um, went, uh, the fire department just went to FRS this year. I think the police went uh, last year. General employees, except for a group, went um, about uh, 10 years ago. And so we do have a few. <coughs> Yeah, so we've got, yeah, so whatever, whatever, uh, I think we've, what do you say, four? We've got still got four employees and council members that haven't been discussed or moved into this FRS? That is correct. Correct. Okay. I'd like to see us move forward with that, get this, get this done, because we, this is something we've been working on for how many years, John? It's been a lot of years we've tried to make this transition. Yeah, I think it's been about a 10 year program to get out of the private pensions that are uh, hurting cities and go into the Florida pension plan, which is the strongest retirement program. So, reading here, I think in my research, I found there's nine, you know, between city council and four other, so we've got nine people that have not. Uh, but that's something we need to talk about for this year's budget. I can bring it back to the budget. You guys can make your decision yeah. during the budget time. Get that done. 
And I guess that's, uh, I guess that's it. That's it for my, uh, it looks like we're into good times. I will announce, I'm, I'm not citing anyway, but just so y'all know, Trump was uh, acquitted on all charges. So that could be good or bad, however you feel, but I think it's good for the economy right now. So I think we're into good times. All right, did you get all that? I've got all of your budget priorities. What I'll do is uh, work with the team, put those together, and I will uh, be bringing this back in June, and then we'll be June, July, August, September. There will be probably at least two, four, six, eight public meetings uh, for the public to weigh in on the budget, uh, and hear the council deliberate, as they have every year, on uh, things that will not make it in the budget, things that will make it in the budget, what the millage rate will be. And then uh, in September, there'll be two public hearings. Uh, usually the first two months you're hearing the council deliberate, discuss um, what's going in, what's not going in, what the millage rate might be. And then in September, the public has two opportunities to um, uh, come up, be heard uh, by the council, uh, and, then, and then eventually you'll adopt your uh, budget in September. And of course, we're talking about a budget that begins October 1st, uh, 2020, and runs for a year and ends on September 30th, 2021. And that's it. All right, well that brings us to new business. Any new business? I do have something I'd like to bring up. Uh, there's been a lot of talk recently uh, about business tax receipts and possibly the county getting rid of those and some of the other cities. Um, and as Mr. Tweedy pointed out, uh, Tavares is a very friendly, uh, very friendly to businesses. And I'm wanting to just see what we can do to get more businesses into our community. Um, I know that you know, the city of Tavares collects the business tax receipts. And, you know, it all sounds good to try to do what we can to get rid of taxes on businesses and uh, to make things easier for businesses and not to have uh, government intervention. Um, so I don't know if, if we can maybe look at the possibility of getting rid of the business tax receipts in the city of Tavares. I don't know if um, staff could possibly put something together, looking at the pros and cons and bring that back to council and see if that's something that we want to possibly do or look at. Yes, we could. Um do some uh, due diligence and research on your business tax receipts program. Come back at the next council meeting, um, tell you what you're currently doing, uh, what the revenues are, uh, what it's used for, and then uh, give you some pros and cons on uh, um, reducing it, um, eliminating it, or keeping it. We can do that. Thank you. I wanted to bring up the, the different events we attend and, and city functions um, that, you know, it's obviously impossible for the mayor and the vice mayor to attend all of them. If we should probably maybe have a schedule. I've, I've been a part of different organizations that as board members we have a schedule. For instance, the month of January maybe would be vice mayor <coughs> Fister's or month. Mr. Stevens, it would be February and so on and then have an alternate like we do with uh, the different um, boards we sit on. Um, just something to consider so that we have a presence at every one of them. I'm enjoying attending all of them. It's exciting for me, obviously, but there's times that I won't be able to, um, and I wouldn't mind attending if another board member is attending as well, but it would just be a little more organized and no guilt that nobody's there. We can bring back the annual um, calendar for upcoming events. I mean, I've got a 12-year history. I have a pretty good idea when they are and what they are. They might move a day or two. I'll bring back the calendar, and you guys can discuss which ones you want to attend. Uh, and then we'll shoot you reminders throughout the year. You know, you're scheduled to attend. And if you can't, something's going to come up. Always does. Um, I usually always have a staff person. Either I'm there, or somebody from the leadership team is there. Uh, and then I'll call another council member and see if they're available if one of you can't make your scheduled attendance. So I'll bring back a calendar. You guys can kind of go through it and talk about which ones you want to go to. Seeing no other new business, we'll move on to old business.
St. Mill Old Business. We'll move on to historical perspective with Trace Historical Society. Ms. Burley. Mr. 
I was waiting for Mr. Drury to say that's a county road, so we don't do it. <laughs> um, the, uh, quickly, three items. One is uh, we were talking earlier about the various nature park and bears. Um, my my question is, why can't you put a fence along that entire stretch to prevent the bears from intruding into the neighborhood? There, you're bears. Um, just like if you had dogs or something else, it's a, like a, a, a nuisance, I think is what they call it, um, the <coughs> definition. Um, same as if you have a swimming pool and you don't have a fence around it. And the other thing is, uh, I think that since there are various bears, uh, uh, probably you ought to subsidize the bear-proof trash cans that all the residents along there uh, could get. Because right now they cost $40. Uh, next is uh, budget goals. You talked about those videos. I will repeat my annual request that uh, the city make videos. Um, and then you also, I'm glad to hear some talk about benchmarks and, and so forth. But I think benchmarks and metrics for each department, like cost per employee, uh, so forth, should be included in each departmental section, and it should show a three-year trend the prior three years plus the forecast of the trend. And uh, finally, you talk about events, and I would also encourage that you shift events to being self-paying and not subsidizing as much. Uh, there's, I see some of them, Mount Dora, where they get these outside firms, they come in, they put it on, I think they pay the fees and everything, and there may be pluses or minuses to that, I'm sure Mr. Drury knows. But uh, I think if that would be part of what you should do, start moving towards it, because you have become an entertainment section, but yet right now it seems taxpayers are paying the burden for a lot of this, and there ought to be some sort of a, uh, a plan to shift these to self-funding events. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yepith. Anybody else from the audience? Okay, we'll go audience to be here and move on to reports. Uh, Mr. Jury? Uh, I've got a list of the meetings. I updated it. Um, the uh, or two meetings that were not put down correctly. One was um, P and Z, code enforcement P and Z. So take a look at those. Uh, I gave you the updated schedule uh, for that. And then the um, uh, Lake County League of Cities uh, has moved its location from the. Um, Thank you. Late receptions to the Golf Club of Highland Drive. Uh, so if you are looking for the League of Cities meeting place, which is every um, month, uh, don't go to late receptions. Go to the Golf Club in Mount Dora because it's changed. And I updated that on the schedule as well. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Ms. Novak? Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Chief? Mr. O'Keefe? Uh, two things, Mayor. The um, county public safety answering point when we dial 911 has just announced that you can now text from your any telephone, cell phone, uh, to 911. So that's uh, on the uh, Facebook and Instagram tonight. So that's a new feature that's available to all citizens throughout the county. And uh, in that vein, there's a strong weather system moving through. Florida tomorrow night, overnight, Thursday, and Friday morning about 3 a.m. So keep your weather radios on and be aware and have a plan. Thank you, Mr. Keith. It's supposed to be quite windy. Uh, Mr. Tweedy. Just a quick save the date reminder for Plains Trains and Barbecue coming up here this month, February 29th. Thank you, Mr. Tweedy. Mr. Clark? I have nothing, thank you. Ms. Biblitz? Ms. Rogers? Just a few little things. Um, the Mobile Recreation Center Rec Rover will be at Lake Niner Park this Saturday, thanks to the Recreation Department. They're going to roll it out as kind of a prompt-to pop-up, and we're excited about that. That's a very busy and vibrant park. Um, classical guitarists, if you have nothing to do with the next Thursday at 1230, uh, a fabulous guitarist from Orlando will be performing at the library as a free concert. Weeks and enjoy the music. It's free and it's, I can't wait. Uh, and then also next Thursday at 5.30, uh, 600 little girls and their dads will convert on the pavilion and we are excited 
invited to host Father Robert Lance. Uh, and if you do not be able to come down to the pavilion to the pier and watch the little girls, it's amazing. I mean, they are just, it looks like it's a miniature prom. They've got everything <laughs> done, their hair, their nails, the, everything. It's amazing. It is fun. So, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Ms. Houghton? Mr. Pacheco, uh, unless Mr. Chief, anything? Move here, thank you. All right, Mr. Williams. Julie and I are um, uh, small-time back um, RVers with a truck camper, and in several trips that we've been out west, we have stayed at municipal RV parks <coughs> that are small and little touristy areas. They're kind of fun. Um, I had never thought about that for various, but and the proponent has left, so she didn't get to hear me say it. But uh, not a bad idea. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> Chief Keith, that, that was really, that blanket was uh, pretty neat, that lady did. That's really, oh, I'm sorry, she's still here. You forgive me, I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> move. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I should just be quiet. Uh, Ma'am, that was very nice, what you did. Uh, that was very sincere. And, and Cool. That was a neat moment. So uh, thank you for doing that. Chief Keith, thank you for your service, sir. I didn't know he was in there first for tonight. My father's in there first. Thank you, sir, for what you did. And everybody else. I'm surprised you didn't bring up the Chandler RV. Um, in here. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I'd like to um, thank all the department heads. I've been touring the departments. I'm about done, and it has been wonderful. I've enjoyed the time with each and every one of you and getting to know your staff. And you all wear two and three hats um, at many times, and very well done. Thank you. And lastly, the quote of the day would be, limitations live only in our minds, but if we use our imaginations, our possibilities become limitless. And the author is Jamie. I'm sure I butchered his name. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Mr. Singer? Pastor Watkins, sorry that I missed the uh, African American Heritage Festival. I understand it was a little uh, itchy with the weather, but um, I wish everything could have went a little better, but I understand that the evening before was well attended, so glad to hear that. But uh, yeah, I wish I could have been there. It's always a good event. I always look forward to that. And there's always next year. Yes, but uh, no, and uh, Miss Rogers enjoyed the uh, the senior shakedown. Uh, what an event that was! What we had seventy five people that showed up for that. It was great. Talked to one gentleman there, eighty nine years old, out there dancing. It was just uh, great. Just uh, you know, it's amazing the, the programs that the city of Tavares has for for everybody, you know, the seniors, the youth, uh, you name it. We've got something for everybody. It's just great. Uh, and the gentleman that I had spoke to, he was from the villages. He was down visiting uh, some friends. So we bring people from all over. I thought that was, that was really great. Um, I thought there was something else, but uh, I didn't write it down. So that's all I have, Mayor. Back to you. All right. And uh, once again, thank you for having me, Pastor Watkins. Uh, we got a wedding ticket, but. No, we didn't. Dang. Okay. Uh, but I was this close to getting my face painted, so I just didn't want to embarrass you guys. So. Yeah. Um, Without further ado, we'll go ahead and close this meeting. Meeting is adjourned. Have a great night, everybody.